in the name of the Lord. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want us to go to the book of Psalms, 63 and verse number 8. Let's stand as we read the word of the Lord. Psalm 63 and verse number 8. The psalmist cries out to God and he says, My soul followeth hard after thee. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. That word hard, in case you're wondering, what it means, it means to adhere to. It means to be glued. It means to connect. It, it means to be connected. Nothing is going to pull it apart. It means to be stuck to. And so I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you stuck to God? Are you stuck to God? Brother Levesque, would you pray over the word? Lord, we love you today. We give you praise and glory and honor, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for your great mercy and faithfulness to us, Lord. Lord, you're stuck to us, God. Amen. We just want to be stuck to you this morning, Lord. Anoint this word. Speak to us, Lord. Accomplish your purpose in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated. In your walk and in your relationship with God, can you honestly say with passion, I pursue you. With passion, I cling to you. Lord, I am going to stick to you like glue on paper. Amen. And the reason why with passion, the reason why that I cling and I adhere to you and I am blue to you is because I feel your grip upon my life. Your right hand upholds me and I keep my soul close to your heart. What is our soul? Our soul is an immaterial object. You will not find the soul on a microscope. You will not find the soul on an x-ray. You will not find your soul on a CAT scan. But the soul, if I could say it like this, it is the essence of our being. The soul is who we are. This flesh that you look at in the morning, in the afternoon, is not really you. It is just a temple. It is just a veil. It is referred to in Corinthians as a tent. But our soul consists of our mind, which includes our conscience, our unconscious. Our soul is our will and emotions. It makes us us. Someone said, and I don't know who said it, but they said, a soul without a center is like a house built over a sinkhole. David, who was anointed king of Israel when he was a teenager, when he was a young man, had to run a good part of his adult life, not only from King Saul, because of the jealousy and the rage that King Saul had for David, but also even from his own son Absalom, who tried to cause a rebellion within the house of David. So through the course of his life, he 
seem to be running from an oppressor. The king, a man after God's own heart, a man that loved God, that surrounded himself and his life with worship and praise and prayer and repentance. Saw King David was not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But there was something about David through the good times and through the bad times over the consistency of his life. It was his intention. It was his plan. It was his will. It was his cry and it was his heartbeat that, Lord, my soul follows heart after you. I am glued to you, God. I am going to adhere myself to you. I am going to be passionate about you, and I am going to cling to you. The reason why I am passionate about you, the reason why I am clinging to you, the reason why I adhere myself to you, and I am glued to you, because your right hand upholds me. You keep me close to your heart. I feel your grip upon my life. As we were singing that last song, you said it. I believe it. You said it. It is done. I felt the touch of God in my spirit. I felt the touch of God in my soul. I felt the touch of God in my life reminding me I've got my hand upon you. No matter what you are seeing with a natural eye, no matter what you are feeling with your emotions right now, no matter the thoughts that are going through your mind right now, my God, once again, touch me. My God once again assured me that I am with you and I am going to be with you. It may not always, oh, somebody shout amen. It may not always be easy, but I'm right there by your side. I've got you and I'm going to carry you through this and you're going to come out on the other side a winner. You're going to come out on the other side victorious. Why Lord? I'm going to cling to to you because you love me. I am going to adhere myself to you because you care for me. I am not going to turn my back upon you, but I am going to stick to you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I am going to stick to you, Lord. So David running from the oppressor, David was haunted by King Saul and by his own son Absalom. And even though there were times that he was running, even though there were times that he spent days and nights in the wilderness and in a cave and even among the Philistines, it was a passionate desire of David that I don't want to lose my faith in you, God. And I will never lose my faith in you. Because whether I am facing the lion, whether I am facing the bear, whether I am facing Goliath, whether I am facing Saul, whether I am facing my own son Absalom, I am still going to trust you. I am still going to believe in you. I am still going to hold tight unto you because you are the center of my life. Come on, somebody praise him. You are the center of of my soul and I know God that if I will push everything aside I'm going to feel your hand I'm going to feel your touch I'm going to feel your blessing upon the shoulder of my life I'm going to feel the stirring of your spirit with inside of my spirit and that ought to give me hope and that ought to give me faith and that ought to give me assurance that God you are going to see me even when everybody turns their back upon me, you're right there. My soul follows hard. My soul is stuck to you. My soul is adhering to you. My soul is glued to you. I am, le I am holding on to you, God, and I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. In other words... David was saying to God, God, you can't get rid of me. And I'm not getting rid of you. 
We live in a throwaway society. People throw away their children because they're too much to handle. People throw away spouses, throw away boyfriends and girlfriends. People throw away family members because they're so self-absorbed with themselves. People throw away friendships. People throw away God. People throw away the foundations upon which they were built upon their life because they are so self-absorbed with self. They, they look at their situation and they think that they, they are the only person in the world that's got that situation in their life. And they say, what's the use? What's the use of going on? But I'm here to tell you, I serve a God whose name is Jesus. And I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care how dark the night may be. And I don't say that callously. And I don't say that unsympathetically. But I'm just letting you know that my Jesus is going to be there. My Jesus is going to touch you. And if you will cling your soul, if you will cling to him and not let go come on are you stuck to God he's gonna see you through because he holds you with his right hand he holds you with his power and authority amen he holds you close to his heart because he cares for you and loves you are you stuck to God today are you stuck to God today Will you follow after him? Take an honest look at your life. Take an honest look at your life and be bold enough to examine yourself and ask yourself, is your soul stuck to God that you are going to follow hard after him? Search him and long for him. Search him and cry out to him. Will you see and will you look that, God, I'm here and I ain't going anywhere. When we reach out to God and our soul is stuck to him and our soul is here to him and glued to him, it is then and only then that we, we can lift up our souls to be nurtured, strengthened, and healed by the glory of God. Amen. If we are adhering to him, I'm going to say it again. And if we are stuck to him, amen. And if we are glued to him, we are lifting our souls up and we are opening up the door that he can nurture us, he can strengthen us, and he can bring healing to us. Because an individual that is centered upon God knows exactly, amen, that his heavenly father is there to help with the pain. He's there to help with the fear. He's there, amen, to help with the anxiety. Because my soul, I am placing it each and every day in the presence and care of God. So I refuse to allow the fear. I refuse to allow the anxiety. I refuse to allow the pain, the torment, to tear me down and to tear me apart. Because I'm adhering to you, God. I'm staying Staying close to you, God. I'm believing you, Lord, that you're going to move. You're going to open up a door. You're going to make a miracle. It may be seeming like I'm going down for the last time, but you've got an outstretched arm. And as David said, you picked me up out of the miry clay, and you have set me upon the rock, and we are built upon the rock that the gates of hell shall not prevail against. Let Let's be stuck to God. Do you hear me today? Do you hear me today? Oh, I want my soul to cleave to him because his right hand holds me. Well, what does it mean by his right hand holding me? It's symbolic of his power. It's symbolic of his authority. Amen. And if his right hand is holding us, in fact, Jesus is called the right hand of God in Isaiah chapter 53. So we understand that Jesus Christ became the right hand of God, the power and the authority of God here on earth. 
Amen. To love you, to love me, to care for you, to care for me. And so as I yield myself and I surrender myself and I give myself to my God, he is going to be my savior. He is going to be my deliverer. He is going to be my help. He is going to strengthen and see us through. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4, 19, wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him. Amen. In well doing as unto a faithful creator. My God, he is a faithful creator. And because he is a faithful creator, I believe that my God can keep my soul in well doing. You may be facing right now having the lights turned off. You may be facing and looking at an empty refrigerator right now. You may be facing your car is on empty. You may be facing a a bill that you don't know how you're going to pay, but I'm here to tell you, my God is going to make a way. How is he going to do it? I have no idea, but my God is going to make a way where there seems to be no way because he is a faithful creator. I said he is a faithful creator. I said he is a faithful creator, and I'm going to allow him to keep my soul. I'm going to allow him to keep my mind. I'm going to allow him to keep my emotions I am going to allow him to keep my conscience I am going to allow him to keep me because his right hand holds me his right hand keeps me close to his heart I am going to be stuck to God I am going to be stuck to God now I will be honest with you that it is much harder to do than it sounds to keep our souls centered on God because we can easily become distracted by things that is going on around us. That's why it's so important, amen, to remember the scripture that Brother Levesque read to us in Psalms 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Get your eyes off of what's going on around you. Get your eyes off the surroundings around you. But begin to lift your eyes. Begin to focus upon him. Begin to see him in his glory. Begin to see him in his power. Begin to see him in his majesty amen then you're gonna see the angels of god or that force field that he talked about encamped round about you and you're gonna be able to shout and you're gonna be able to say they that be with us are more than they that be with them because i serve a mighty god i serve an awesome god i serve an all-powerful god that is going to see me through because I want to be stuck to God. I want to be glued to God. I want to be a here to God. That nothing, nothing is going to pull me apart from him. I don't want to be distracted. And so it's a constant discipline that I've got to add to my life. That when I hear a voice to the left or a voice to the right, I keep my eyes upon him. Amen. When I see something trying to spring up in my spiritual peripheral vision, amen, I'm going to keep my eyes upon my Jesus because he is going to see me through. I, I don't know who this man is, but his name is Thomas Kelly. He wrote this, we feel honestly the pull of many obligations, trying to fulfill them all. Isn't that true? And we are unhappy, we are uneasy, we are strained and we are oppressed and we are fearful that we shall be shallow or we shall fail. But when we 
have our soul stuck to God. You listen to me today. When we have our soul stuck to God, we have our life adhered to our God. Amen. We are glued to God. Then we are going to be. Amen. Well, we are going to be taken care of. We are going to see the power and the glory of God within our soul and within our heart. But if we do not adhere ourselves, if we do not glue ourselves to God, then the ground around us will become a sinkhole. How many knows what a sinkhole is? I remember a couple of years ago, you were hearing all the time about sinkholes in Florida, swallowing up roads, and you would see the pictures of the cars in this gigantic hole, sinkholes swallowing up holes, amen, because the ground underneath them gave way because of the cavity deeper in the earth was no longer filled with whatever it was filled with, most likely water, and the ground collapsed, amen, because there was a hole there. Well, let me tell you something, amen. My Jesus will not allow you to sink into a sinkhole because as the old Simon and Garfunkel song says, he is a bridge over troubled waters, hallelujah. We need to walk that bridge. We need to live on that bridge. I'm telling my age a little bit now. Some of you don't even know who Simon and Garfunkel was, amen. But I'm here to tell you, he is a bridge over troubled waters. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Oh, because I'm going to be glued to him. My God. Oh, somebody shout amen right now. He is going. We're going to be glued to him. We are going to love him. Are you stuck to God? Are you stuck to God? Are you stuck to God? Because when you're stuck to him, there is nothing. There is nothing that can rip you apart. I, I was planning this morning to do a illustration but when I found out I couldn't get this thing unstuck amen I muted me and Marcus had to work a, a work around and so my mind just went every other way but I, I was going to do something like this here here here's the Lord if you will just as just as an illustration and, and here's us all right amen now the the we us is on top of God but here's a problem when the wind blows we're no longer on top of God. When troubles come, we're no longer on top of God because we're just sitting there. But when we're stuck to God, now, I'm using my phone. It's not glued, but it's a lot heavier. Ain't gonna move. Because you're glued to Jesus. Hallelujah. It's time that some of us in our spirit and in our soul, amen, will become glued to Jesus. We will become a here to Jesus. That we're not going to let, amen, when the winds blow. We're not going to let the trials shake us. We're not going to lose our connection with God. I am going to adhere to him. I am going to follow hard after thee, O God. I am going to follow hard after thee, O God. I am going to follow hard after thee, oh God. Wherever you go, I'm going to go. Thank you. Brother Cruz, come here. Come on. Up here, Amano. <laughs> you're going to be you're going to be Jesus for a moment, okay? Hey, congratulations. Okay. I, I just want you to walk around the plat. Just walk around the platform. Just walk around the platform. You know, Jesus walks by and we see him. Hey, Jesus. I love, keep walking, bro. Just keep walking. I'll tell you when to stop. Hey, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You are awesome, God. Amen. We might have an interaction with a moment with the Lord when he passes by. Amen. But that's all that happens. Just keep walking, bro. Don't, don't stop. Amen. But I'm going to grab him. I got a hold of him. Amen. Keep walking, bro. I'm, I'm attached to him. Amen. I'm not going to let him go. Amen. I'm going to hold on to my God. Keep walking, bro. Down there. In Jesus' name. Oh, where he goes, I'm going to go. Amen. Where he walks, I'm going to walk. I'm not going to let go of my God. I want to be adhered to him. Thank you, brother. Amen. I want to be stuck to him. I want to have the blessing. I want to have the favor. 
I want to have the anointing because when I'm stuck to God and when I'm adhered to God, uh, whatever's in him is going to flow to me. The blessings and the strength and the anointing that he has within him, it's going to flow to me. It's going to touch my heart. It's going to touch my soul. It's going to touch my life. I don't want there to be a sinkhole under my life. I don't want the ground under me to be eroded. But I want to have a good foundation. Amen. And so to keep our soul from being eroded, we need to stay, stay centered upon the Lord. We need to stay centered upon the Lord. His word, his ways is the essence of our life. You know, I, I, I read... I read this first verse so often, verse number one and verse number two so often. I'm going to read it again. Oh God, thou art my God. Psalm 63, verses one, two, and three. Oh God, you are my God. He is not just a God. He is not just the God, but he is my God. I'm stuck to him. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. When somebody, amen, is hungry and they are hungry beyond hungry and they are thirsty beyond thirsty, amen, they will do anything within their power, whether it's good, whether it's lawful or not, amen, to quench that hunger and to quench that thirst. And so we must also have that same passion that as I hunger for God as I thirst for God I am going to do what is necessary to quench that thirst Lord I'm thirsty for thee so I am going to seek thee I'm telling you how thirsty I am for you Lord I'm out here in the middle of the wilderness I'm out here in the middle of the desert and there is no water there is no precipitation there is no moisture from anything around me so God God, I'm crying for you. I'm longing for you. Verse number two, as I seek you, God, I want to see your power. I want to see your glory as I have seen you in the sanctuary. I remember the time I've been at church praising you. I remember the time that I've been at church dancing with you. I remember the time that I was running a victory lap in Jesus' name. And now, God, I need it now. Oh God, I need that touch now. Oh God, I need that anointing now. As I have seen you, Lord, I need you today. I want to be glued to you. I want to be adhered to you. I need you. Verse number three, the Bible says, because, why? Even though I'm dry, even though I'm thirsty, even though there is no moisture right now, I'm going to continue on, and I, I am not going to allow an illusion. I am not going to allow what I think I see that is not really there to distract me. Amen. What is it called? A mirage. I am not going to allow a mirage to destroy me. They say that many a person died in the deserts out west in the early days of our country because when they were walking and they were without water on the horizon with the heat shimmering it began to look like a, a pool of water. And because they were so thirsty, they became delirious that when they saw that pool of water, they, they would dive right in and they would begin to drink it. But in actuality, they dove in sand and were eating sand. I, I, if I can, I want to be delirious for Jesus because he's not going to be a mirage. 
Come on, you hear what I'm saying? He's not going to be a mirage because his right hand upholds me. His right hand keeps me and he keeps me close to his heart because your loving kindness is better than life. Your loving kindness is better than that steak potato. Your loving kindness is better than that piece of fried chicken and glass of iced tea. Your loving kindness is better than a Krispy Kreme or an ice cream. I'm here to tell you, your loving kindness is is better than anything that I can achieve and obtain here in this life. And because of that, even though I'm thirsty, even though I'm dry, my lips are going to praise thee. My voice is going to praise thee because I follow hard after thee, God. I follow hard after thee. I'm not going to let go. I'm not going to turn around. But I am going to love you and praise you in the midst of the storm. David was a man absent from the sanctuary for a lot of his life. And it wasn't by choice. But he cries out, God, you are my God. I am running for my life, but you are my life. And things aren't going well, but I'm still running for my life. Because you are my God. I follow. My soul follows hard after thee, O oh God. I am stuck to you. I am adhered to you. I am glued to you. Even though it's physically dry where I am at, you are my thirst quencher because I am stuck to you. Are you at a place in your life and in your walk with God that you can renounce once and for all whatever does not lead to God, I am going to leave it alone. Amen. Amen. Whatever does not lead to God, I am going to leave it alone. You want a simple way to guard your heart? You want a simple way to guard your soul? Ask yourself this question. Will this situation that I'm about to endeavor in block my soul's connection to God? And if it is, and if it does, you better walk away from it, no matter how good it looks. As I begin to live my life asking myself this question, will my situation block my soul's connection with God? then I begin to find out that the world really does not have any power over me. The world does not have any authority over me. So what if I don't get that promotion? So what if my boss doesn't like me? I don't really have to worry about this next thing. So what if I have a bad hair day? <laughs> so what if I have financial problems? Sometimes that's life. But through it all, God is there. God is there. And these things, and well as other things, can and will cause disappointment. But do they have any power over your soul? I say no when you follow hard after God. Because the word of the Lord says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed a begging from bread. Can these things that I mention nudge my soul from the center of the heartbeat of God? No, unless I give in and I yield to them. When you think about it that way, you begin to realize the external circumstances cannot keep you from being with God. When you recognize that they have no power over your soul because your soul followeth hard after God. Your soul is stuck to God. Your heart, your soul is adhered and glued to God. Then when these things come, and they will come and they will go, just as David ran for his life, when you are following closely after God and you are hard following him, then you will be drawn closer to him.
Galatians 2.20, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. But look what he says, when I die, die out, I live. I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. When we are following hard after God and we are adhering to God and stuck to God and we are not yielding to ourself, not yielding to our own dictates, not yielding to the pressures and the things that are surrounding within inside of us, God becomes our life. He becomes our life because Christ liveth within me and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm talking about a mighty God. Amen. Paul understood the correct concept of crucifixion because when you are crucified with Christ, you truly live because your flesh, if you will, is nailed to the cross. We're not talking about this body, but we're talking about our will. We're talking about our emotions. We're talking about everything that makes us us. It's nailed to the cross. And when you're nailed to the cross, you can't get down. That's why the scoffers and mockers mocked at Jesus. Well, why don't he call the angels to come take him off the cross? He saved others. He can't save himself. I don't want to save myself. I want to be connected to God. So when we are nailed to the cross, if you will, our soul is stuck to him. It is adhered to him. Amen. And when we die out and we're stuck to the cross, amen, there's, a, there's going to be a masterpiece of glory and power that will be made manifest in your life. Because he then can do the work that he truly wants to do with you and for you. Whenever you think it's all about yourself, you're standing in the way of God working in your life. When I think it's all about myself, I'm standing in the way of God working in my life. But God wants to walk in your world. He wants to walk in your world with a sparkle in his eye and a smile on his face to give you this word, Psalms 46 and 10, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. It's time to quit warring with God. It's time to quit fighting with God. It's time to surrender to him and be still within your spirit and be still within your soul to know, to know that is to experience him. That is to flow with him. That is he flowing with inside of you. That he is God. I want to follow hard after him. So be still for a bit. Because when we are still, he can work wonders in our life. You said it. I believe it. You said it. It is done. You said it. I believe it. You said it. It is done. You said it. I believe it, you said it, it is done. Why? Because I'm stuck to him and I cannot think of anything else and I cannot say anything else because God is my savior. God is my deliverer. God is my way maker. I am following hard after him. I am going to come on church. I am going to be stuck to him. I am going to worship him. I am going to love him. I am going to adore him and my God God is going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Trust him. Cling to him like glue to give you hope. Allow yourself to become 
from insecure with God to being secure with God. From being regret riddled to a person that I no longer have regret because I am stuck to him. From a person that has fear to an attitude, Lord, I'm ready to fly in you. You know, it's so easy to feel like that when you're in the mess that you're in and you're faced with the garbage that's surrounding you, the anger and the hurt, the job loss, the financial fear, the church split, the broken heart, the broken home, the suffering, can never be touched by Jesus because I've stepped one step too far. But when you begin to say, you said it, I believe it, you said it, it is done, you said it, I believe it, you said it, it is done. You begin to feel something within your soul. You begin to feel a kingship with the king of kings and the lord of lords. You begin to feel an anointing flowing from heaven to earth. Oh, somebody say amen. Because you have become stuck to God. You are adhered to him. And you are glued to him. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing is going to pull you apart. Nothing is going to separate you. Because I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I am not going to let go of you. I am not going to turn my back upon you. I am not going to surrender to anything but besides you because your right hand upholds me. Your right hand upholds me. In Psalm 63, 8, our scripture reading, my soul followeth hard after thee, God. My soul followeth hard after thee, and your right hand upholds me. I am passionate. I am passionate. I am passionate. Too many times we are like this story. Story goes like this. That a man met a friend of his. And the friend of his dropped the bottle. And the bottle broke a lot of pieces. So his friend gathered up the pieces of the broken bottle glass. And he held that broken glass close to his stomach. And every time he moved, what happened? He got cut. Every time he moved, every time he turned, he got cut more and more and more and more. This is what happens to an individual that has troubles and cares, and, and they hold them tight to their heart because they won't let them go. They get hurt more more and more and more. But when you're stuck to Jesus, when you adhere yourself to Jesus, you are not affected by what's going on around you and you are not allowing yourself to be cut up. The apostle said in Colossians 3, 2 through 4, set your affection, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid in Christ. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, you shall appear with him in glory. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. For verse 3 says, you are dead and your life is hid in Christ. As far as the world is concerned, you have died. And your new life, your real life, is hidden in him. And when we are hidden in him, he is going to take care of us. He is going to see us through. He is going to make a way. 
How is your life? Are your, is your soul following hard after God? Are you stuck to Him that you are not going to let go? Habakkuk chapter 3, 16 through 19. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. When I heard, my belly trembled. Fear. My lips quivered at the voice, and rottenness entered into my bones. And I trembled within myself that I met, might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up to the people, he will invade them with his troops. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and there there shall be no herd in the stalls. What does that mean? Ain't no money in the bank. Ain't no groceries in the cabinet. The credit cards are maxed out. The gas tank is on empty. All hope is gone. There is nothing physically tangible around you that can help you. He said in verse number 18, he said, yet, yet, I will rejoice. He makes that determination. He makes that commitment. It's not going well right now. Everything that can happen is happening. I see no way out of this situation. Yet I will rejoice. Yet I will rejoice. Yet I will rejoice. And who am I going to rejoice in? I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. I am going to rejoice in the God of my salvation because he is the hope and he is the strength of my life. He is my joy and he is my peace. Verse number 19, the Bible says this, because the Lord is my strength. The Lord has become my strength. He's going to infuse me with the power of the spirit. He is going to renew me. They that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength and he will make my feet like hind feet and he will make me to walk upon high places. Amen. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to praise. I'm going to magnify my God because I'm clinging to him and I'm not going to let go. I'm clinging to him and I'm not going to turn around. He is going to be my strength. He is going to be my salvation. He is going to be my deliverer. I ask you as we stand, does your soul cling heart after God? Does your soul follow hard after God? Are you stuck to Him? Are you adhered to him? Are you glued to him? Wherever you go, Lord, that's where I'm going to go. Wherever you go, Lord, that's where I'm going to walk because I am stuck to you. You're not going to be able to chase me away. You're not going to be able to beat me off you with a stick because I'm holding on. Who does that sound like? Sounds like a man called Jacob to me. That he wrestled all night long with an angel of God. 
the might and the glory of heaven. This man, humanity, a man of failure, a man of deceit, a man that was considered a worm. He wrestled all night with this angel. And the Bible says the angel prevailed not against him. Why? Because Jacob had faith. Jacob had faith. And the Bible tells us that the angel touched the hallow of Jacob's thigh. I'm sure when his thigh popped out of joint, he probably did this number right here. I watched my wife a few times over the last several weeks after her last fall. It seemed like her right leg would just go out. She would almost fall again. So I can get a kind of an illustration of what Jacob must have done and how it would hurt and how it would be painful. But he still held on. He still held on because he knew there was a blessing. He knew there was a blessing. He knew that there was going to be a life-changing experience. And when you're stuck unto God you're not going to let him go but Cruz come here one more time you're Jesus again start walking I, not only am I going to be stuck to him I'm let this angel go Come on, walk, Jesus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Of course, it's really a little bit too hard for him because he's smaller than I. But I'm not gonna let go, God. I'm not gonna let go. You may try to get away, but God, I'm not gonna let go because I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna praise you. I'm gonna worship you because you are my God. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. I'm gonna follow hard after you. And that, with my arms wrapped around that man, would give you the best illustration of following hard after Jesus. Let's lift our hands and let's love the Lord right now. Let's magnify the Lord in the sanctuary. Let's call upon the Lord. Let's love Him. <laughs>